I want to say one more thing. Uh, I've seen a survey of 150 different corn uh, corn fields in the area. They're not all necessarily in, in our water district. But of the 150 corn fields, 130 of them were over 100% of PDT. The highest one I think I saw on there was 40 inches of applied irrigation water. Now guys, we can do better than that. We have to do better than that. Um, I won't, I'm not here to fear monitor you to tell you that the state is breathing down our neck and we're gonna, they're gonna <laughs> shut us down tomorrow. But I will tell you that they expect us to be a conservation district, to act like a conservation district, and we need to provide value to you, the producer. We need to help, we need to be able to answer these questions. How far can we push this? How far can we go? Now, I'm not standing up here and telling you we're going to one acre foot tomorrow. Don't go home and tell your neighbors you heard this crazy guy telling you we're going we're gonna to be cut back when we're all out of business. But that's why we need to do these demonstrations. They need to be field sized under real world conditions out there that you guys are experiencing every day. We think it's it's viable. We may not get exactly there with the hybrids we have today, but I think we've heard from our seed companies that there's some stuff out there on the horizon that's very promising. And so we're gonna get busy and we're gonna study that. Um, thank you very much. And uh, I'll try to answer any questions. Mr. Stitter. If you would, wait for the microphone to record against this way everybody can, can hear it. <coughs> Dan, <coughs> I compliment you on, uh, on, on this challenge. I, I think it is a challenge. But I don't think it's absolutely off the wall. I, I think there's. <clears throat> but the question I have on the 12 inches in your protocol, how are you going to distribute that 12 inches? Because there's two different scenarios. If, if I'm a farmer that has a very limited well, I can only pump so many gallons per day. So if I use that 12 inches, over a period of 90 days, that's one inch per week. <clears throat> so, uh, if I use it over 60 days, I've, I've got an inch and a half a week. So in your protocol, are you going to have a more water available? In other words, are you going to shut your pump off? and apply 12 inches so that you can get four or five inches of it during that past period. So that, that's a question I'm raising is, how are you going to handle the protocol? I think that can make a lot of difference. And uh, if you look down the road, you're going to be managing that one inch per week. But I don't know how you're going to do it. Again, I, I compliment you on your challenge. I don't want to get into too much detail because the board's going to spend some time on this, but I will attempt to answer your question. Um, first of all, we know that there are people out there with a lot of water, and maybe some of these yields are not that attractive to them, and they're still interested in, in, in higher yields. Those producers probably aren't going to be people that are going to number one that are going to want to be cooperative you know are going to want to be cooperative and do a demonstration but there are people with more limited water and that this is very important to them and i think we're going to be able to find those people now that amount of water that's going to be applied during the season uh, all of our agri partner data back here uh, that gets us close to that. Maybe they're, they're, we're not there. But that data 
We did not tell any producer how to irrigate. There was no irrigation management whatsoever on there. So we think with some irrigation management, some timing, probably some delayed irrigation at the start of the season, and more water uh, bunched into that time period where the crop is using the, uh, the maximum amount of water, yes, that water will be, will be uh, scheduled throughout the season. We're going to be counting on our, our friends with the seed companies. They've done some of this research. But, but what I want to leave with you is this is not a research pro pro uh, project. We're, this is a field size uh, project. And we, we have to get close there. We, we're probably going to be looking at some sort of compensation to the producer that uh, uh, cooperates with us on this that uh, if we don't get to a certain level of economics and this thing just bombs out, that that producer's not gonna wanna cooperate with us unless we come up with some sort of uh, compensation. And we'll be talking about that. Anybody that's interested in this, we'll be talking about this Monday at our, in our board meeting, probably pretty extensively. And we're gonna be talking about those ideas and some people are going to be there to help us answer those questions. So. Do you think it's any coincidence that uh, the counties where the uh, overall irrigation and precipitation was less than 100% of ET out yielded in aggregate those were above 100% ET? Yes, I, mean, I mentioned, if you want to go back to that slide, uh, we can draw, I think we can recently draw some, uh, some conclusions here. As I mentioned, we know the further west, with the higher altitude, that water will, uh, will go farther. And if we look at the weather station data, the total water usage from a weather station, say, at, uh, at Edward, for the same planting day, would be 100% of PET would be less than what it would be like, say, at Currington. So, yes, we, we, we can draw that conclusion. Um, that's one of the things that's obvious there. Um, if you see the total, we're down there in that 28, 30, 31. The further east we go, we're getting up there to that 35. So logically, we could probably say that it's going to take, maybe the other side of that is, it takes more water, more total water, to grow the same amount of uh, corn the further east you get. Does that answer your question? Uh, not really. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was trying to make the point that those that irrigated uh, less or put on less total water got higher yields, uh, which might be due to uh, less of that water going to deep perk and nitrate loss associated with it. But uh, you pointed out that there's other variables going on there too, so it's hard to draw a real conclusion. Well, your point is there, though, that we do believe that maybe across the district that 85 percent of PET is not going to put us in really really drastic uh, stress uh, we may be getting on the edge of it but we still think we can we can have a reasonable yield with 85 percent of PET based on some other information that we've seen. Uh, 